What's going on guys? John Alder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to look at buttons in custom Kinter. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at buttons with custom Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships on my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. All right, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at buttons and custom Kinter. And you can see we can hover over these and they look different colored. They're nice and rounded. They have little icons on them. You can have those or not. You can have text, you can have no text. We're gonna look at it all in this video and it should be pretty cool. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and then get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Kinter videos in this series, over 200, so check those out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic Kinter starter code that we've always got. I'm calling it buttons underscore cust dot pi for custom Kinter. And remember, we have to import custom Kinter. If you don't know about this, check the last couple of videos that we did. I've been talking about this for a couple of videos now. We set the you know basic appearance to dark, dark blue, and that's pretty much all we've done so far. So in order to use buttons in custom Kinter, you can just use buttons. But if you want to use images, you need to pip install pillow. Uh, that would just be pip install pillow, something like that. I've already got it. We're good to go. So let's go ahead and import that real quick. So let's just go from, and it's capital P-I-L. We want to import a couple of things. We want to import image and image TK, just for good measure. So now this will allow us to do imagey type things with Kinter. We've done this a lot with other Kinter videos. This is not a custom Kinter thing. This is just all Kinter uses pillow whenever you want to deal with images. So let's come down here and let's define our images. And before we do that, let me just pull up a Windows Explorer real quick here. And I've just added a folder to my GUI directory called test images and I've got some images. I downloaded these straight from the custom Kinter example on GitHub. So if you want those, or you could probably download them from my GitHub after this video. But you can see we've got a couple of little icons here and these are transparent PNG files. So they're kind of hard to see if we pull this up. You can't actually see it because it's transparent, you know what I mean? But uh, you know, we've got an add folder button and a little add list icon. And these are pretty big, so we're gonna have to resize them. Another reason why we need pillow for that. So let's just come down here. So let's go add folder underscore image. And we want to set that equal to an image tk dot photo image. And inside of here, we want to go image dot open, we want to open up our image. And we can use a relative path here because this file is in the same folder as our directory that holds our images. So I could just call our test underscore images directory, and then just call our add dash folder dot png file. And then, like I said, this is a very big image, so we can just go ahead and dot resize this guy. And then inside of here, I want it to be 20 by 20. And then let's also set the image to anti alias. And that just sort of keeps the pixels around the edges of the image nice and crispy and all that good stuff. So, okay, let's go ahead and just copy this guy. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paste it again. And instead of add folder image, the other one we want is add list image. And instead of add dash folder dot PNG, it's add dash list dot PNG. Okay, so that looks good. So now let's just create our buttons. So if you don't remember, head back over to github.com slash Tom Shemansky. This is where the custom Kinter repository is. Click on that, come down here to documentation, and then over here, find the button documentation and you can see all the cool things that we can do with that. We're going to be playing around with those a little bit, but you can look at that yourself if you want to. So head back over here and let's just go button underscore one and set that equal to a custom tkinter dot ctk button. And the C and the T are capitalized, the K is not, and the B and button is capitalized. So sort of keep that in mind. And we want to set this in our master equals to root put it in our root window here. And we want to set the image equal to this add folder image like that. And we can set the text equal to whatever we want, let's say add folder. And we can set the width equal to like 190 and the height equal to like 40. And then finally, we can set the compound. So that's C-O-M-P-O-U-N-D, compound, and we'll set that equal to left. And that's where we want the image on the button, left or the right. You could also do top and bottom, and we'll look at that in just a minute. So 
Uh, let's go ahead and button underscore one dot pack this guy, give it a pad Y of 20 and a pad X of 20, give it some space around it. And okay, we're good to go there. So now let's also create a button two. And that's also going to be a, a custom. In fact, let's just go ahead and copy all of this. Instead of compound left, let's go ahead and put compound right just so we can see the difference. And here instead of add folder, let's say what add list or add item, something like that. Instead of add folder image here, we want to add list image because that's what we called this guy right up here. And we could play around with this one as well. Now, by default, this first button is blue because at the top here, we set our theme to dark blue, we can change the colors of the buttons too. So in fact, let me put this on another line just so it's kind of easier to read, we can give it a foreground color of let's say b three, five, b five, eight, I happen to know that's red. And we can also change the color when we hover over it by changing the hover color. Right. And so let me go ahead and set that equal to C seven, seven, C seven, eight, which is sort of a lighter shade of red, I guess. And again, let's button underscore two dot pack this guy, give it a pad Y of like 10. And again, a pad X of 20. So Okay, let's go ahead and save this and see if we screwed that up. Head back over to our terminal I'm in my C slash GUI directory. And let's run Python buttons underscore cust dot pi. And boom, when we do, we get these cool buttons. Now, these are rounded by default, you can set the radius of the rounding of that. You notice this button image is on the left, this one's on the right. The hover color is different. The top one, the hover color is changed just because that's the theme that we picked that dark blue theme. This one changes because we set that color to a lighter red in the hover section of the button. So very cool. Like I said, you can move these images left or right, also top or bottom. So if we wanted to kind of play around with that, we could let's see, let's take this top one here, instead of left, let's say top, whatever, come back over here, run this guy again. And you'll see here now it's on top. It's kind of this button's a little the size of this button doesn't quite handle that. So we would need to make this button a little bit bigger. And the height and width attributes, no big deal there. You can get rid of the text itself. If you want to get rid of the text, it's a little different. You don't just take out this section. Instead, you give it a text equal to nothing. All right, so if we save this and run it, you'll see now we just have that little image on there, right? So that's cool. I'm gonna go ahead and put that back. If we did just take out the entire thing, it's actually kind of funny. Let me show you what happens. Uh, let's run the sky again, we get this weird button, it, it sort of puts the definition of what it is a CT key button as the text. So you don't want that. So if you don't want text at all, like I said, just set this equal to nothing. And, and that'll work. So like I said, head over to the documentation, there are some other things you could do here. We looked at the text, we looked at width height, this corner radius just sets the how much rounded the corners are we've looked at that in past videos, uh, the border with same thing, again, foreground color and background color, border colors, obvious hover color we did, we could also set hover equal to true or false, you could change the text font. We've already done image, we've done compound, and state is regular button state in Kinter. We've looked at that in regular Kinter buttons. And that means disabled or enabled, you want to make a button that can't be clicked on, you would set the state equal to disabled. Very cool. And uh, kind of all there is to it. So that's a quick primer on buttons with custom Kinter using images, pretty simple, and uh, really cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So it's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.